It's my pleasure to uh, visit with you a little bit today about the history of the Seward Arts Council. Uh, I've worked with the Arts Council for almost 40 years, and it's been a pleasure working with a variety of interesting people through those 40 years and wonderful projects. Um, the Seward Arts Council formed in the 1970s and uh, was an is an all volunteer organization. It were a 501c3 organization, and uh, we do have a, a set of officers and a board. Uh, we've worked with the area of community arts programming and creating main events, as well as endorsing and coordinating other events, uh, supporting events, and making sure that art continues throughout the community. Over the years, the CERT Arts Council has formulated a variety of projects and activities. For example, we sponsored and produced five children's operas involving children in the community. We sponsored uh, the Missoula Children's Theater. We've hosted the Lincoln and Omaha Symphony, as well as the uh, Opera Omaha presentation here in Seward. We've had uh, three Chautauquas because of the Seward Arts Council sponsorship in our Seward area. We've hosted several watercolor competitions and sponsored a variety of art shows and uh, worked with many galleries and gallery presentations. We've coordinated numerous activities uh, in conjunction with Concordia University, often working with their Lyceum and the, the students at Concordia and their presentations as well. We work with the Nebraska Humanities Council and have presented and sponsored hundreds of humanity speakers through the uh, last several decades. We're honored to salute and thank the Jones Bank for this contribution of art to our community. However, this is only one of many uh, avenues of art that the Jones Bank offers to the community as they continue to support uh, the fine art series at Concordia University as well and have brought in many wonderful uh, presentations through that program as well. We see, that we know that they realize the value of art in the community. It's obvious throughout their bank, and we uh, look forward to working with them for many years to come. The Seward Arts Council continues to serve the greater Seward area, coordinating arts activities, both in sponsorship individually and helping other groups uh, in their support of art. Uh, we like to thank the Jones Bank for their many contributions uh, to the arts community and look forward to working with them for many years. First, I would like to thank the Jones Bank for this beautiful piece of artwork and their investment in the arts and culture in the Seward community. I would also like to thank all of the people and businesses who helped to promote the arts and enhance the opportunity for creativity and support the Seward Arts Council. Art viewed in public spaces is especially important to a community. It adds only, not only beauty, but acts as a conduit to forge the young and old into expression. Art and creativity builds bridges between cultures. When we are surrounded by art, it has a huge impact on our mood and behavior in a very positive way. Without art, there would be no expression as an individual. Without art, life as we know it would not exist. We must create. It is our hope that when people view beautiful sculptures, such as the one at Jones Bank, they will be inspired to find the artist within. Again, thank you for sharing this expression of art with the Seward community. Hi, I'm Josh Eichmeyer, Mayor of Seward, and I want to congratulate Jones Bank on receiving the 2020 Mayor's Art Award from the Seward Arts Council. I think it's great that as a community, we take pride in our local art and celebrate the many works of art that enhance our town. I also think it's great that the untitled sculpture displayed in the Jones Bank green space was created by a Nebraska-based artist out of Omaha. Seward is fortunate to have many works of art displayed throughout our community, and the Seward Arts Council's Mayor's Art Award is a great way to recognize and promote these artistic attractions. The first such award recognized the Prairie Trail sculpture in front of the Nebraska National Guard Museum. 
Other past award recipients include the light sculpture at the Hartfeld Children's Memorial on Concordia University's campus, Todd Williams' Seward County Courthouse painting at the Seward Memorial Library, the William H. Seward statue on the courthouse square, and the For Which It Stands statue of small children facing the courthouse flag. These are just some of the art displays peppered throughout our community. And now I am proud to include Jones Banks sculpture as yet another example of Seward's commitment to the arts. Thank you. What artwork means for the bank, I think has been very important over the years. Uh, we've had local artists, Markshausen, has, we have his mosaic and a number of his pieces. Michael Bristol, we have a number of his pieces throughout the bank. So now we have works throughout the organization that are done by current, our local people. There's modern art, there's abstract art, uh, there's uh, sculptures, and, and the Wake family has done a wonderful job of doing this and getting uh, art into the building. For me personally, I, when I started with the bank in the 80s, I had not had much exposure to artwork, and it's been a lot of fun to see the different things and the different sculpts, the different artwork that we've brought in, and try to understand that and, and realize that everybody interprets different things from different pieces. So it's been a great experience. The discussion for an outdoor art piece uh, started back in 2011, 2012, when we were starting making plans for our addition and remodeling of the bank. We knew that we'd be taking down some buildings to the south of the bank and we'd have a, a clearer green space uh, that we'd not had in the past. So that was part of the plan and part of the process. Once that remodeling was completed in 2014, we had our landscaping in place, we decided to let it mature for a few years before we bought a piece so that we would know what that green space would look like. Once we determined where that sculpture was going to go, uh, you would think that would be the easiest part. We would, everything from there would be easy. But the sculpture weighs approximately 1,100 pounds. And in that green space, we also have uh, a geothermal well fields. So we had to be careful where that got placed, how deep the base was. The base had to be able to support the sculpture and not damage any of the well fields. Working with underwood construction, we were able to get the base put in and the lighting put in in late 2019 with the plan to set the sculpture on the base in uh, April of 2020. The site and landscape at Jones Bank was designed to respond and to address a number of key factors, conditions. Um, one of the first one is that it sits at the crossroads of the two primary entrance routes to Seward, Highway 34 and Highway 15. So the Jones Bank site really is a, a, an important um, entry feature from the south into into the Seward community. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that uh, Jones Bank really anchors the southwest corner of the courthouse square, the traditional courthouse square in Seward. Um, that's a really important uh, green space, open space, and building in Seward, the courthouse. And since the bank anchors the southwest corner of that, we thought the landscape and the site at Jones Bank ought to really respect and actually enhance that open space and, and connect to it. The third, con the third condition that we needed to really uh, pay attention to was the fact that across the street, across Highway 15, is the city public library. So uh, the space at Jones Bank, the landscape needed to be not only because of the courthouse space, outdoor space, but also the um, uh, library uh, space be a real community-oriented space. And, and really the bank um, itself, the bank operation, uh, and business is very community oriented. The, the Wake family has always had it that way and I think really believes in, in that's the way the bank should uh, respond and, and fit within the community in terms of a community business. Our teams met on site to determine the best location of the sculpture, really thinking about where it would best be viewed by 
vehicles, pedestrians, as well as bank customers. To finalize that placement, we created several digital renderings as well as a printed replica to be placed on site. And it really ended up being quite comical delivering this life-size printed poster of the sculpture on site because the dimensions are quite large, measuring over six feet by six feet. But ultimately, we placed the sculpture in the center of the lawn, uh, facing the intersection of, South, of Highway 15 and South Street as you approach the bank. We were very excited at Underwood Construction to be a part of the sculpture for Jones Bank this summer. Um, it's something different that we've never done before, and it was very intriguing to us to become a part of it, both uh, putting the footings in and the, and the base for the sculpture and also helping set the sculpture in place. Uh, we had a lot of geothermal wells to work around, so we had to be very careful. Uh, we hired a big truck that sucks the dirt out of the ground for the footing rather than using a backhoe. Um, and then we poured a four by four by four foot deep uh, pad for the sculpture. Uh, with an inch and a half stainless steel rod in the center to help hold the structure from uh, the sculpture from ever falling over. We wanted to be a part of this project uh, because we know it's going to be here for years to come and we can always look back and see uh, the sculpture and that I had something to do with it. For people who are lucky enough to travel widely, they seem to see artist June Kaneko's work popping up around the world. In plazas, convention centers, museums, and even on New York's Park Avenue in front of the Waldorf Astoria. Taking a 1,000-pound block of clay and fashioning it into a dungo is a tremendous engineering challenge. Kaneko is the first artist in modern history to attempt clay pieces of such size. First, his assistants cut the clay into slabs and work out all the air bubbles by hand to strengthen the clay. Then June begins working on the 600-pound bases upside down, slowly building up the sides before he encloses them. June works on batches of six to ten at a time because once the bases are fashioned, they must dry for several weeks before they're strong enough to support a 400-pound superstructure. Hold it, hold it there. Even flipping the base is a challenge. Go straight up. As the walls build higher, the dangers mount. The clay can't be too thick or too thin, too wet or too dry, too soft or too hard. Timing is crucial. The lower levels have to be dry enough to support the increasing weight, but supple enough to merge with the fresh clay. Actually, everybody doing clay work makes dango, because dango in Japanese is a dumpling. And then when you start using clay, usually people end up with a, a ball shape. Everybody is doing it, but I guess I got idea from that part of it. Sometimes talk about spiritual scale, which doesn't have a anything to do with a tape measure, like a two feet or ten feet. Just spiritually you get drawn into the piece and then you forget about all of these conventional relationships and then just become peace itself almost. If people say I'm not creative, probably they are not. 
because they are putting limitation on themselves. Without putting limitation on yourself, how much can you do? It's up to you. Thank you, Mayor Josh Eichmeyer and the Seward Arts Council for this very nice recognition. At Jones Bank, our mission is to serve our customers and the community. And we wanted our bank property in Seward to have a similar sort of outreach. So we created a green space and a location for public art as a way to connect and interact with the community and also to enhance the southern entrance to downtown. Seward has always been filled with public spaces that are vibrant, engaging, and inviting. June Kaneko is a world-renowned artist who calls Nebraska home. Many of his works promote civic interaction and are displayed in public spaces. We are so honored to have his work here in Seward. Our bank has a tradition of supporting local artists. We feature their work in our bank offices and are pleased to provide charitable support to local arts organizations. We are most appreciative of the Seward Arts Council. Let's keep working together to promote the fine arts in Seward. Thank you.